What is going on guys? Welcome to the first actual episode of the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. In today's episode, we're going to answer the fundamental question of what algorithms are. So we're going to define that. We're also going to look at some pseudocode in order to see what an algorithm could look like. And we're going to talk about some examples of where algorithms can be used. And also we're going to see some differences in efficiency. And that's basically what we're going to do today. So let us get right into it. So let's start by tackling the most fundamental question first, which is what is an algorithm? And I'm not going to bore you here with the scientific definition. I'm going to give you a very intuitive and simple definition, which is it is a set of instructions, set of instructions used to solve a problem. Now, problem is always a very interesting term. Problem essentially means task. So whatever you want to do, sorting a list or finding the shortest path from A to B uh, or finding the minimum spanning tree of a graph, finding the maximum element of uh, a list, it's always called a problem. It's just a goal, a task that you want to achieve and a set of instructions you need to do so uh, is called an algorithm. So um, an algorithm is not necessarily limited to computers because as a human, think about it, let's say you want to cook something at home because you're hungry. What do you do? You go online, you download an algorithm called a cooking recipe, and then you follow the set of instructions in order to solve the problem of cooking a meal. That's essentially what you do as a human. And a computer has also a set of instructions for solving a problem. Of course, in this series, we're going to focus on computers, but essentially it's the same because when a computer uses a certain set of instructions to solve uh, the problem of sorting a list, for example, you can use the same instructions as a human to sort the list in an efficient way. So if you have a thousand elements uh, or 10,000 elements and I want you to sort them, uh, you can also use merge sort, which we're going to talk about in the future what that is. You can also use the efficient sorting algorithm of merge sort to sort this list, uh, even though you're not a computer. So it's not necessarily limited to a computer, but we're going to talk in the context of computers here. So let's get an example here of sorting a list. Let's say you have a bunch of numbers here. These are the slots for the numbers. And we have the numbers 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 1. And now what we want to do is we want to end up with a sorted list. As a human, it's very easy to see what the sorted list would be. It's just 1, 2, oh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. That's the sorted list that you want to end up with. Uh, but a computer doesn't have the kind of big picture understanding or cannot just look at the whole uh, picture of this list here and say, okay, I know how to sort it. I have the intuitive feeling. A computer doesn't have intuition, at least yet. Um, at this point in time, it doesn't have intuition. So it has to use a static set of instructions in order to solve the problem of solving, uh, sorting a list. So what we could do here, for example, is you could just go ahead and tell the computer, go through the whole list and find the smallest element. So start with nine, nine is the smallest element up until now. Three, three is small, uh, smaller than nine. So three is the smallest element right now. Then four, four is larger than three. So ignore it, five, same, six, same. Two is smaller than three, less than three. So two is the minimum and then you go for one. Okay, one is the minimum. So you end up with one as the minimum. What you do is you swap the position with the first element where it belongs. So you have one, three, four, five, six, two, and nine. This is the first step. Then what you do is you ignore the first element and you do the same thing for the rest of the list. So you go three, four, five, six, two, new minimum, nine, still new minimum is two. So what you do is you take two and swap it with the second position here. So you end up with one, two, four, five, six, three, and nine. Then you do the same thing with three and third position and so on. This is what you do until the list is sorted. And this kind of sorting algorithm is called selection sort. Again, I'm going to talk about sorting algorithms in a uh, specific episode in the future. But for now, you need to know that there is an algorithm called selection sort, which essentially just picks the smallest number, puts it in the first position, picks the second smallest number, puts it in the second position, and so on until the list is sorted. This is one way, one algorithm that you can use to solve the problem of sorting a list. Now, it's not the most efficient one, and that is what I'm trying to make, uh, What th this is the point that I'm trying to make here, that there are different algorithms that can solve the same problem with a different efficiency. And we're going to talk about what efficiency and good or bad algorithm actually means in one of the future episodes about runtime complexity. But for now, you need to know that there are different algorithms that work in a different way and can solve the same problem 
in a different efficiency, with a different efficiency, with a different runtime complexity. So the same problem does not always have the same uh, runtime complexity. You can use different, a different set of instructions to solve the problem. And this is what you need to know for now, uh, that it's important to find the algorithm that, solve the pro that solves the problem with the best efficiency. So now let us get to pseudocode and pseudocode is essentially just a way to put down the instructions of an algorithm, the set of instructions uh, into code that is not limited to a particular syntax. So pseudocode is not Python code, even though it's very similar to Python uh, or looks very similar to Python. It's not Java code, it's not C++ code. It's not even a unified pseudocode syntax because people write pseudocode in different ways. It's just a logical explanation of an algorithm. You write down an algorithm in a code that may look like Python code, may look like Java code, but it's not a particular syntax that is used here. So for example, let me give you an example and you should be familiar with basic coding. As I said in the first video, you should know what a loop is, you should know what an array is, what a function is and so on. But what you can do, for example, is you can say, 4x equals 0 to 10. This would be one way to write down a full loop that goes from 0 to 10. But you could also write it down as 4x equals 0 until uh, x is larger than 10 or larger or equal to 10, whatever it is. You can also write it down in your language. You can, I mean, 4 is a pretty unique um, keyword that you should probably be using, but um, you, you don't have to use until. You can use the word in your language if you want. So pseudocode is not limited to a language or to a particular syntax. Now to uh, get an example here, let's just start by defining a list of numbers. But this time we don't want to sort this list, but you want to find the biggest element, the largest element of that list. So let's say we have two, five, one, eight, nine, and six. These are the values. And what we want to do now is we want to find the largest element. In this case, of course, this is nine. Uh, but we want to write an algorithm in pseudocode that finds the largest element. So what we could be doing is we could just go ahead and say um, a equals and then you can just write list of numbers or something or you can actually write down the numbers doesn't matter because the focus is not on creating a list The focus is on finding the maximum elements. So now you could go ahead and say or actually we should use a colon here as well max element is a index zero. Okay, this is a very ugly a, a index zero, because that essentially means we take the first element, it doesn't make sense to set it to zero or to 1000 or to minus 999. Uh, just pick the first element because you're not going to find uh, an element as your max element that is not on the list. So you're definitely going to succeed if you take the first element as the initial maximum element. So you just take index zero here and then you can just go ahead and say for each number in A, you can write it down like that. There's no problem with that. It's pseudocode for each number in A. If um, number is larger than max element, Uh, then you can say if number is larger than max element, we just say max element equals number. That's a simple algorithm that is always going to find the smallest, ele uh, the largest element, sorry. So let's go through it. You create a list of numbers. We have a list of numbers here. Maximum element would be two. Okay, let's save it. And then what you do is, okay, you say for each number in A, if the number is larger than max element, set it, uh, set the new max element to the number. So what you do is you compare two with two. Okay, it's fine. It's, it's the same number, so we don't do anything. You compare five to two, you see, okay, five is larger than two. So what you do is you say five is the new maximum. Then you go to one, ignore one, eight. Okay, eight is bigger than five. So you choose eight. Then you go to nine, nine is larger than eight. So you choose nine, then six, you ignore six and you end up with nine as the maximum element. That's, this is one algorithm that you can use to find the maximum uh, number of a list. And this is the pseudocode, one pseudocode that you could write for that. Um, now the example is not very complex, but I wanted to show you uh, what pseudocode looks like. It is basically just writing down in a code like way what you're doing. Uh, for example, look at this line here for each number in A. I mean, you can write it like that in some languages, but it's just explaining what you're doing. It's not, you, you don't have to care about a certain syntax. You just want to 
make it understandable what you're doing. You're looking for each number in A and for each number you're comparing the number with the maximum element. Um, and this is essentially what pseudocode looks like. We're going to look at a lot of pseudocode in the future episodes. So this is a brief introduction into pseudocode. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button, leaving some comments in the comment section down below and subscribing to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. Uh, this today was one of the first actual educational episodes of the tutorial series. Uh, we talked about pseudocode, we talked about what algorithms actually are, and we're going to build on top of that knowledge as we go on with the series. So if you have any questions or feedback to the series, let me know in the comment section down below. I always answer YouTube comments. And yeah, that's basically it. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.